Okay, well, we brought our poor, long-suffering crash boat uh, down to the Warsash Maritime Academy, where the International Fire Training Centre is based. Uh, they're going to help us out because we're setting fire to our boat. Uh, this test is probably more worrying than any of the others because I've learned that if there's a hole in the side, you can fix the hole. Uh, if the mast falls down, you can drag it back up and you can save the boat. If it catches fire, it's lost. If you don't control the fire, it's lost. So, what we're doing today is we're going to start a galley fire and an engine room fire, and we're going to test various methods, or at least I'm going to be testing various methods of dealing with them, of putting them out, of containing them, of preventing them getting hold of the boat. We've got Martin and his team helping us out today, uh, just in case things do get out of hand, and he's there to, to hose everything down and make sure it doesn't go completely wrong. Yeah, yeah there does seem to be a lot of flammable material. Just how flammable they, uh, they actually are, we'll probably find out as the, the trial goes ahead. The genuine concern is that everything could get out of hand. Um, I've not had a fire on a boat, so I don't know how fast it could get out of control. In a, in a confined space, which uh, inside the yacht really is, you've got the build-up of smoke's going to be very, very quick indeed. Uh, disorientation by the person. And what you've got to remember is, is the biggest kill in a fire and a post-fire situation is not the orange, crinkly stuff, the fire. It's the fumes, the smoke, if you will, that's been given off by that fire. And even your own firefighting uh, mediums can actually pose a, a problem to you as well in that confined area. I did uh, the Merchant Seaman firefighting course here. And that's over in a metal block over there where they set fire to everything and have you crawling around the floor in breathing apparatus. Obviously that's not going to be the case there. People on yachts don't have breathing apparatus. They have uh, a fire blanket and a couple of extinguishers which are probably out of date and haven't been serviced in a while. So we're going to look at some of the ramifications of that as well today. All right, gents, uh, as you know, a small fire would be a rather large fire within minutes. If anything does go wrong, anything whatsoever, myself or one of my colleagues will shout the word emergency. That would be three times. And here in emergency three times, gentlemen, you'll evacuate the boat by the safest means straight onto the pontoon, by the safest uh, way possible. Forward hatch will be used by myself and Chris, and my firefighters will remain and make their escape through the after way there. If the fire cannot be contained, gents, be under no illusion, your vessel will sink. We will flood it until it does. OK, I can't afford GRP going up alongside a pontoon, particularly in this busy channel such as this one here. Is everyone happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK, we're just about to set the first fire, which is a pan fire. Um, obviously bacon and eggs maybe, but we've got some kerosene in there instead. So I'm going to go for the blanket after Martin lights the fire. OK. There's our fire. Pull the blanket out. Hands over the top, raise, turn. And raise. That's excellent, Chris. Well done. Now, do I leave that there? You absolutely leave it there. If for that liquid to have ignited, it's got to be a certain temperature. You've got to know how to leave it to cool down. If that's a small amount of uh, vegetable oil, uh, for purpose sake, then we need to leave that blanket. You pull that way too soon, you open it up to the air. We've reformed that triangle, you're going to have a reignition of the fire, so it remains there until it's safe. Very little smoke produced by that particular fire, we didn't allow it to burn for any length of time, mm -hmm. which in reality, the speedy reactions actually dealt with it very, very quickly indeed. Again, it's one of those, as soon as it happens, you do feel kind of edgy it's suddenly, there's a little rush of adrenaline. Um, but yeah, by following the training on how you, how you grab it and laying it over, yeah, well, it works. It works. Well, I'll, I'll add one more thing, Chris. You wouldn't be doing that solo. Obviously, if you sail a vessel solo, you, you, you would have to let every other crew member know what's occurring on board. Shout fire, 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 OK? And give the location of fire, OK? That's telling, that's pre-warning people of the danger that may be between decks, OK? Don't leave them in ignorance and then find out you've dealt with the fire. Well, unfortunately, you haven't, and we've got a, a large fire down in the galley position. I'm using an excellent this time kerosene. It's very fast, uh, safe excellent than uh, most others. Just a little bit of kerosene on but a, a couple of bits of toast should get us enough flame to deal with an A-class scenario, hopefully. A-class being? Uh, A-class is a, a solid state fire. So basically, it used to be known as carbonaceous fire, so you would papers and right, fabrics okay. and bread comes under that criteria. So we've got a stovetop toaster here because we don't have a, a grill in there and we don't have any gas on board either. 
So the idea is that we're making toast, toast gets out of hand, catches light. How do you deal with it? That's what we're doing now. OK. That do you. There we go. Now, do you want me to test this one before we... OK. Right, yes, yeah, give it a, see, see if it works anyway, Chris, uh, pull the pin, uh, aim it away from you. If you do it down the sink somewhere, that should be fine. So, yeah, all you need to do is now squeeze the trigger. Okay, and so again, do you like to do it again? Just have another little look at that. Yeah, give it a shake, you know, so. It ain't going to make a lot of difference, you're not going to pressure in it. So this is uh, one of the ones that came with the boat, there were four there. Um, yeah, absolutely hopeless. 2006, well, bear in mind that if you do buy a boat and there are fire extinguishers on it, and, it, you know, that might be a point that, you know, they're advertising that it's fully kitted out with safety stuff, but that's useless. OK, well, that's the only phone one we have on board, uh, and it's completely useless. So, fortunately, Martin and his team have got, uh, it's a 9 litre there. You know, I like the phone for those on, uh, on a Yossi Monthly Readers boat. But um, it's a foam extinguisher, and you would have one on board. You would need one. OK, we'll let, the, we'll let this put, just, just catch. Hopefully we'll have a bit more flame. A little bit All more right, smoke with this particular now. one. We've got a proper fire. Now you can see with danger, Chris, we've got the curtains just yeah. about to go. I just need to deal with this situation okay. as soon as you can, please. Jesus. Not too close, Chris. Stand back a bit more. Stand back a little bit more. Super. Okay. That's great, Chris. Excellent. Well done. So a bit of free flowing fuel fire from the leftovers of the toast. What happened there, Chris? Because you got, got so close to the fire, the pressure from the extinction actually pushed everything that way. A piece of the toast fell back, which you dealt with very quickly. That's actually quite superb, really. Yeah. But uh, stand back. Remember, you smell that, you've got the smoke in there. You don't want to start breathing too much of that stuff in. Just right. stand back, fight the fire. It would, be, it would have been as successful, and it probably wouldn't have led with a half your toast. Well, it's unedible in any way. But. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's what's left. That's the foam extinguisher. is a bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, had you not used that, then this would have gone up, no doubt, that afterwards. There'd be smoke everywhere, you'd be choking, you'd be in no condition to do anything. So yeah, um, it's a mess that can be cleaned up. Uh, it was a different experience, definitely. Uh, the blanket, I don't know, it just feels, because you know you're closing something off with a blanket. This, I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. I don't know if it was, well, it did, it blew the toast back here, and the toast was still burning down there. So I went in that way. But, like you say, Martin, if I'd have been doing it from further away, then there wouldn't have been so much pressure and I could have dropped it on top and dealt with the fire on top of the stove rather than knocking it under it. OK, we're going to do another a toast test. We tried the foam. Um, that worked. Obviously, uh, sprayed things around a bit. I should have been further back. Now we're going to try powder. Um, so what should I be doing with this? Well, the dry powder itself, it, it will not cool a substance. There's no smothering effect as, uh, as such. All it does is really gets into the flames and breaks down the chain reaction. You're not removing one side of that fire triangle, as we discussed. All you're really doing is interfering with the chemical reaction. You've got to be very aware, once you've fought that fire, you're still going to have some heat there, and that heat could potentially uh, recombust. So what we're going to do is we're going to trial your onboard firefighter plants with your dry powder once again. They are very common on this sort of vessel. And when you do, bring it across, nice rapid motion across the flame bank and uh, eliminate that or inhibit that flame growth. And how far away do you want me? I want you, I don't want you quite as close as you were okay. for the, the foam. Your safety first. In fact, straight in front of the companion way is perfect. So I can Things get go out. wrong, you've got an escape route open yeah. to you. Okay, so we just need to test this, make sure it's working. Uh, so I'll pull the pin out. Let's have a go. Let's have a good shake. Okay, that's not too bad. Not as much uh, dry powder quantity as I expect, but already just after that half a second of, of testing it, you appreciate we've got quite a bit of dry powder in this cockpit already. So we're going to go for the fire then, because you're happy. Okay, yeah, great. This time, we'll, what we'll do this time, Chris, is just get that toast burning nicely for you. And see about the heat now rising. Fire's actually taking control now. Hopefully. <laughs> That's hot, that's hot from now here. It's getting hot now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah very yeah. hot indeed. Okay. Stuff inside the compartment behind you, it's not going to be long before they start to be given off their combustion potential. You now feel the smoke coming in. Let's deal with the situation, Chris, while that smoke built up. Okay, stop there. Chris, how are you feeling? All right? 
Right, out the emergency exit, please. Quickly, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Please stand by. Please stand by. Please stand by. Please stand by. Please stand Okay, well, it's the first time I've used powder, um, and it, look, it's just absolutely everywhere. Everything is coated with it. As soon as it happened, visibility disappeared. Uh, I could feel it on my teeth and stuff like that. I mean, it worked. I put the fire out, but um, is is that it? I mean, well, we yeah, well, that? if you just, I mean, it's been some minutes since you put that fire out. But if you were to hover your hand over that, you can still feel a bit of the heat coming off that toast there and it's certainly the metal work around it, it won't cool. And you have all the elements there for a reignition. I probably would have followed that with a cooling medium. And you're quite right, it does make a hell of a mess. Now, I asked you to leave via the nearest exit, which is that one there. The reason being, not necessarily because of the smoke, but I could see in your face, your eyes, you started to blink here, you find it difficult to breathe. Although you can breathe the dry powder, it still can make you feel uncomfortable, certainly to disorientate you. The best course of action is to actually ask you to leave while my, my safety number dealt with the situation. Right? But I'm wondering if when I was using the powder, mm. as soon as visibility goes, how am I meant to know the fire's out? Absolutely. It's, uh, it, that can be very problematic. It, uh, you've used it. If you can't see any fire, in, particularly if you can't see, you've got to ask yourself one thing. Should I be here? And the answer's got to be no. Right. Get a high towel out, straight out of that situation. Okay, this time we're going to look at fire in the engine compartment. Uh, we're going to use manual extinguisher. This one here, powder. Martin, uh, what do we do? Okay, on well, this particular example, this is a very old boat, or very old, it's about 18, 18, 18, 82. Yeah. Um, most of the newer vessels have already got a fire port so located somewhere. Here, we've, what we've done is drilled a hole in your companionway, and all we've done is place a, a blanking piece over the top, just to simulate that, that port. Right, for exercise purposes, we've not known far, we haven't got any fire in this particular case, and so all you need to do is check the equipment, it's working, open the port, and then put your firefight medium inside. Okay, I don't need and to move it around. You won't have the luxury of movement through the port, it's a, it's a point and squeeze, that's all you need to do. So I've taken out my safety. Absolutely. Always check it before, I wouldn't do the port yet, make sure your equipment's working before you actually start doing that. Gotcha. If you've got a duff piece of equipment, You've wasted time. Yeah. Give it a good squirt somewhere where we can see it as well. Happy days. Okay. Hopefully no one's down there. Here's the the port. Okay. So open the port. I discharge the whole contents within there. Okay. Well, that's that. So now I leave it. Yes. Yeah. I'd certainly leave it. Uh, I've noticed we've got a few more holes in it and. Uh, I first noticed. But you leave that for 10, this, 20 minutes? You, you've, you place dry powder inside the engine space. As I mentioned earlier about dry powder, what it doesn't do is take away any of the heat. That heat's still in there, potentially to reignite. Um, a cooling medium would, would, would be a, a, be, a better solution than so just you, pure dry powder. So you'd use powder and then foam afterwards? If, if you were to, to knock it back with dry powder, follow up with a cooling medium, most certainly, yeah. Okay. That's wow. the mess we're looking at inside there. That's pretty thorough. Well, a nice winter's day picture. Okay, well, there's a couple of guys down on Firewatch on the boat at the moment, just making sure we have got everything out. Uh, it's been an incredibly revealing day, a, a fairly frightening one as well. Started off with a pan fire, and that was fine, just put the blanket over, so I learned the technique for doing that properly. That all went very well. Um, then we looked at some extinguishers. I was going to use a foam extinguisher on a pan fire, uh, and the foam just, it wasn't even foam, it just dribbled out. So this is a, an old extinguisher that hasn't been serviced, doesn't work at all, pointless, would let you down badly in an emergency. Then we tried powder, which in many ways is equally as dangerous because it gets everywhere, it just peppers the air, and you, you can't see anything. You can feel the grit on your teeth. Um, does the job, I mean, but it destroyed the visibility to the extent that you couldn't actually see whether the fire was out or not. Um, and then 
I was rushed upstairs just because you, know, you don't want to be breathing and stuff in, although apparently it's safe to do so. Um, then we looked at an engine fire, which got a bit out of hand. Um, it was the automatic system put it out, but the, the foam had caught, so then that needed a good 10 minute firefight. Then we tried powder through the same thing. And then we just tried to see how far a galley fire would get out of hand. We put some kerosene in a pan, lit it, and just let it do its thing for five minutes. Um, that was fairly reassuring, it didn't go mad, but you know, there's a lot of soot, soot in there, the curtains are burnt. Um, all in all, a very instructive day. Um, again, you, it's essential to get on these fires before they get whole, to control it. If you don't, end of. <laughs>